Book Club Schmook Club is brought to you by Talk Bomb. It's a book review show where I, Kristen Rogers Anderson, and my brother, Will Rogers, talk about a different book every other week. For more information, like our full archive of shows and our calendar of upcoming books, go to talkbomb.com slash schmook. S-H-M-O-O-K. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram under the usernames at Chill and Kristen and at Haunted Sponge. Book Club Schmook Club is available on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to Book Club Schmook Club. I'm Kristen. I'm William. And we are here with a much anticipated episode, at least by us. Yeah. <laughs> That's a funny way to put it, but you're absolutely right. Yep. I've been anticipating this myself for such a long time. I'm totally. so excited that we're here finally. Me too. The Secret History of Twin Peaks. Yes. Written because, by Mark Frost. Yep, because Twin Peaks is coming out with its revival. Two days from the time that you're listening to this, Sunday night at nine o'clock on yes. Showtime. Uh, we will be there sitting, waiting, watching. Yep. Eating pie and drinking coffee at 9 p.m. <laughs> William, I can't be up till all hours. All right, fine, no coffee. I'll drink Dandy Blend. <laughs> okay, sure. We'll have some Dandy Blend. <laughs> We've talked about that on the show before. I know, I know. I just always <laughs> I never got that it that's for you. Thing. No, that's yeah. okay. I drank some Dandy Blend before I came here. Uh, so before we jump into the book. Mm hmm. We have some exciting news. Yeah, we do. Finally. Finally. It has been a long time coming. Yeah. We've been dropping hints left, right, and center, Mm -hmm. uh, but just hadn't been able to really talk about it just yet. Yep. But the time has finally come. Yep. It's all set. We have merch, guys. It is merch time. Yes. Uh, If you go to talkbomb.com slash schmook, S-H-M-O-O-K, you can get links to go to the Talk Bomb shop Mm -hmm. where you can buy the talk, the, 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 finally the official book club schmook club bookmarks. Yep. And stickers. Mm -hmm. They're really, really cool. They're awesome. Yeah, Uh, my friend Jesse designed them. And they are amazing mm-hmm. looking. I love the way they look. Me uh, too. We've got so two bookmarks. One of them is uh, a stack of books with two skulls mm-hmm. on it that are saying "Book Club Schmuck Club." I guess they're our skulls. I yeah, don't know. they are. They mm-hmm. are they our skulls? Is that part of like the design idea? Yeah, because that was awesome. kind of my idea. Because sometimes you see a book with like a skull on top of it, and I was like, well, what if there are two skulls? But then Jesse, like you know, did whatever. It's fantastic. Yeah, I love it. And then the other one is an owl. That mm-hmm. is flying up and picking up a stack of books and, yeah. and, and like kind of like not tearing them apart, but, but like carrying pages. them away. Yeah. Yeah. I and uh, it, it, they, they are beautiful. I mm-hmm. love those designs. Yeah. They were hand drawn designs that we then scanned to make the bookmarks. Yeah. yeah. I, and, and they, they, they look incredible. Yeah. They really do. And then uh, to complement those, we have two brand new stickers, mm-hmm. which are uh, <laughs> they're inside jokes that I hope are still cool. <laughs> I know. I'm a little concerned. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, but I, I I love them because we've been spending so much time now yeah. like inventorying them and looking at them and 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 stuff. But yeah. I really hope that you guys still think that uh, these things are funny. Yeah, you're um, still talking about Mother of Ponju a lot. I hope you are because we've got a brand new Mother of Ponju sticker uh, in the style of Harry Potter. It's a circular <laughs> sticker uh, with the words Mother of Ponju in an arc. <laughs> At the top. In like Harry Potter font. I guess you can stick that sticker on things that you found surprising or exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And then the other is the the official brand new book club schmook club mm. scrabondo sticker. <laughs> So if you go back to our Harry Potter episodes from last summer, I guess, yeah, where we were talking about the, uh, or no, oh, it was from somewhat they were, recently. They're both from the Cursed Child, so at least they're both from the same place. Yeah, okay, all right. I, wait, no, Scribando isn't from the Cursed Scribando Child. Scribando is from like the overall like Potter Watch Shit. stuff that we did yeah, leading up sure. to Fantastic. You should just re-listen all that because Harry Potter rules. It does rule, and I yeah. miss it already. But Me um, too. so those those four new items are available mm-hmm. in the talk bomb store yep the first time that we've ever had merch period yeah and the first time we've ever had book club schmook club specifically totally merch, and i'm very excited about it so uh if you guys go and check that out they are uh they're three bucks a piece uh ten bucks if you buy a full set mm-hmm. but hey uh why stop there we're doing something a little uh, uh different to celebrate the, yeah. the advent of finally having merch yeah we're gonna do a little giveaway yeah yeah, so our plan is, or, well, plan, whatever your plan, whatever, our plan together 
is that um, if you – the deadline for this, for having it into us, is going to be June 2nd. So that's two weeks from you listening to this episode today. It's Friday, June 2nd. And you will be entered to win that entire pack of stickers plus – a sticker that's actually a Patreon donor exclusive sticker that we didn't even talk about of our book club schmuck club logo that you see in your podcast app. So to win that pack from us, we need you to send us a screenshot. You can um, email it to us if you want. Yeah, at, you can email yeah. schmuck at talkbomb.com. Mm-hmm. You can tweet to yeah, us, you can, tag us on Instagram, really put it yeah. in the secret Facebook group, whatever you have to do to get our attention so that we know that you did one of these things. Yep. And then you'll be entered. Um, so we need to see that you either wrote an iTunes review, that you um, tweeted about the show, that you did an Instagram post about the show, a Facebook post, or a screenshot of a text or an email or, or something of you texting a friend about the show. So one of those things of you sharing the show or giving us a review, you will be entered to win this party pack of stickers and um, bookmarks and have that in by June 2nd. And then we'll let you guys know who the winner is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 exciting. I love this stuff. It mm-hmm. looks beautiful. Go to the website. Take a look at the pictures. Yeah. I, I love these designs. I think they're and great. And look really great, like thought out pictures. Uh, yeah, they look all right. They yeah, look they all look right. really good. Um. They're so like staged, like they're being used. And yeah, stuff. exactly. Yeah. We tried to put them in in places where it would look like they're. This is how they fit into your life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, yeah, they're really, really great. I hope you guys like them. Yeah, I really hope you do. Uh, but also, uh, we do have, as Kristen just said, the exclusive talk bomb. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, sorry, the exclusive book club schmuck club logo sticker. Yep, which is only. Mm-hmm. Going to be available through that contest and on our Patreon page, patreon.com mm-hmm. slash talk bomb. If you back book club schmook club, that sticker is just, it's yours. Yeah, totally. No contest, no nothing like that. It's just, it's yours. Yep. So um, you'll just have to give it. And all um, our existing Patreon donors will be getting in contact with you to get your addresses and everything for us to send them out to you because you're already a donor. But in the future, when you become a donor, We'll get in touch and get your address and everything, and we'll send that out to you for free as a thank you. Absolutely. Uh, so it's an exciting new age for mm-hmm. us here. We've never done anything like this before. I'm yeah. very excited about it. Uh, uh, we really hope that you guys enjoy these stickers. Uh, and if it all works out, then, hey, we have a future where we can have additional designs. Totally, and, and yeah. try to explore or other things. Or different kinds of merch and stuff. Exactly. Uh, so anyway, that's – I love a good coffee mug. Oh, I would love a coffee mm-hmm. mug. That'd yeah. be great. Yeah. But so, we'll see how this goes first. So that's talkbomb.com slash schmook. And enough of that. Let's talk about this book. Yes. Okay. That sounded like that sounded like a <laughs> like a catchphrase or something. I apologize for that. <laughs> I think it was fine. All right. <laughs> um, so the secret history of Twin Peaks. Mm-hmm. Mark Frost. Mm-hmm. Kristen, your history with bingo. We're here. Twin oh, Peaks. Oh God. So because I knew that we would get here, I was trying to think of what my history with Twin Peaks was. And I think that I had just heard about it being sweet or something through like word of mouth and probably the internet or something like that. So I hadn't seen it before when it was on. I was like a kid when it was on, um, like live on TV. So my, I, I took like, I took a risk, but one that paid off in that I bought the gold box edition set on eBay, sight unseen of the show as my introduction to it. And I think I did that like, I don't know, like, Ten, nine years ago or something? I don't know. I think I was in my early 20s. Is that the same set you have now? Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's how you got into Twin Peaks? Yeah. That's surprising. I thought that you already knew about it and then you were like, oh, I want to have this. Mm-mm. Wow. Yeah. All right. Cool. I don't think so, at least. I really don't remember. I mean, I don't think so. I think that I just like – I think I went for it. I mean, maybe I'd seen – Hmm. Knowing myself, I bet I saw like bits and pieces at like people's houses or something like yeah, that. I, I can't imagine so. that I didn't see anything. Yeah, because for whatever reason, I think of you as being like a lifelong Twin Peaks. Maybe not lifelong, but mm-hmm. a long, I mean, long, long, long time Twin Peaks fan. I mean, I could have the timeline wrong. I, mean, I think I got that in my early twenties. I, I had never seen the whole. I definitely had never seen the whole show. Yeah. Before then. I, I I probably saw bits and pieces of it because I don't know how else I would be into it and care to get it. Funny. Yeah. Um, um and then I got it and I was obsessed with it ever since. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's like great. I've loved it for a long time now. Because you loved it and mm-hmm. I knew that 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 you thought it was a great show and mm-hmm. it has the reputation that it has. Mm-hmm. I tried watching this show so many times yeah. and did not like it. Yeah. I would watch episode one. I think I watched the entire 
I think I watched all the way through the season two premiere mm -hmm. once, like a couple of years ago, and mm -hmm. I was like, "I'm why? Why did I watch so much of this? Like that's like yeah. nine hours, yeah, for me to just be like, I hate this, yeah, but I did hate it, so I put it down, yeah. And it wasn't until I finally tried again, mm -hmm. I think late last year, mm -hmm. and. All of a sudden, it was like – It clicked. It did. It just yeah. completely clicked within minutes. Yeah. You know, the show opens – this isn't a spoiler at all. The show opens mm -hmm. with the death of uh, Laura Palmer mm -hmm. and her body being found floating in the river yeah. by a character named Pete. She's dead. Wrapped, Wrapped in plastic. Wrapped in plastic. Yeah. And his bizarre cadence when he's on the <laughs> yeah. phone saying, she's dead. <laughs> It just for it was like I was seeing it for the first time. Yeah, and it was immediately awesome, and I have loved it nonstop since. Ugh, it's been so enjoyable to me that you, you and Ryan had the same experience because he had seen it before, and he was kind of like meh. And then when I wanted to rewatch it, we rewatched it together, and he's all in now too. It's been so fun for me I know. because I actually didn't have anybody to talk to about it because none of my friends are really into it or anything. Yeah, like my current friends. So I, I don't know. I just always really liked it, and I was like, I think. I think this is like a big deal. It's like a cult thing. It is but like, such a big deal. Yeah, I know. But um, I didn't have other friends who'd watched it currently. You'd be like, oh man, is this cool? Is this cool? It's been fun for me to have you and Ryan. I'm I'm like, I'm so pumped that yeah. it's, it's been fun because this is, I think that we've talked about things like this before where mm -hmm. it's like, this is a Rosetta Stone piece mm -hmm. of pop culture. Yeah, where totally. I, now that I know what the show is like mm -hmm. and how impressive it is, yeah. I can look back on the past few decades mm -hmm. of shows that oh, I totally. love and see, wow, they were all influenced by Twin Peaks yep. and I just didn't know it. Because I didn't know Twin Peaks. Right. But I'm hearing references to Twin Peaks all over the place, doubling mm -hmm. back to old shows of things that I enjoy and mm -hmm. have enjoyed for years. Mm -hmm. And being like, like what? What oh my God, of? that's a Twin Peaks reference. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm, in what I'm referring to right this second, mm -hmm. it's literally like overt stuff mm -hmm. that I probably was like, oh, I don't really know what that is. So I'm yeah. not going to really pay attention to it. Old podcasts. Mm -hmm. I was listening to, I feel like I'm going to take flack for this, mm -hmm. but uh, I was listening to an old episode of Kevin Smith's podcast. Okay. Oh, anyway, go ahead. He sat down. He was talking to, uh, I think it was the cinematographer who shot Clerks. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they came from like working in that convenience store right mm -hmm. next to the movie store and just loving movies. And at yeah. one point as like young adults, early 20s, they just bonded hardcore over David Lynch mm -hmm. and specifically Twin Peaks and like Blue Velvet. Yeah. And I was listening to their conversation and I was thinking like, I've listened to this episode yeah, before. Yeah, you just didn't, yeah. And it's like it went in one ear, ear and out the other because yeah. I just didn't have a frame of reference for what mm -hmm. Twin Peaks is. Twin Peaks has always been there. Mm -hmm. I just haven't been paying attention. Yeah, because you didn't know about it. Yeah. yeah. And, and like now I look back on my love of things like mm -hmm. the show Lost and I'm like, well, Fucking duh. Yeah, yeah. There it is. There's I figured that was kind of what you were talking about. Yeah. yeah. Now you're looking through things with peaks co colored glasses. I am. It, yeah. it, it changes everything that I've seen up until mm -hmm. this point. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's I one of the weirdest, most blatant forms of that. Um, that show, The Killing, at least the first season of it, which I did like. I liked the first season. I don't know that I finished watching it. I definitely didn't see like the whatever was on Netflix, like the third or fourth season or something. Um, their whole ad campaign was who killed Rosie Larson. Oh. And it was like a whole, it was like a girl in high school. Like it was, and it also it was set in Washington, I think. Um, so it was always like kind of rainy and stuff. So it wasn't exactly, but that was for some reason the, who killed Rosie Larson yeah, is yeah. so who killed Laura Palmer. Well, you know? yeah. I mean, even even one of the things that I think about where it's like this catchphrase defined the show and mm -hmm. defined, it defined the viewer's obsession mm -hmm. with what the, the show is trying to do. Heroes, save the cheerleader, save the yeah. world. Mm -hmm. That was so often mocked. Yeah. Save the cheerleader, save the world. It still sounds goofy, but it got people to actually watch that yeah. show. And I feel like that is just – Twin Peaks, David Lynch and Mark Frost mm -hmm. just being like, yeah, this is who killed Laura Palmer. Yeah, totally. And people being obsessed with finding the answer for I that. No, I kind of wish I was around during that time. I do in a way because it sounds fun, but then I I like that I have access to the internet and everything now. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> to like look at things and theorize with people and everything. But it does seem fun. Yeah. Abs oh, I'm, I'm, it must have been maddening. Oh, totally. When, you know, like season one ends and you have to wait six months for season two. Well, they were approached, Mark Frost and David Lynch, by other companies like besides showtime for like uh putting out everything that the way they do a lot on netflix now like having everything released at one time yeah but david lynch said something like i'm not gonna work for like you know seven months non-stop to have it all gone in seven hours interesting you know? and i was like 
That makes a lot of sense. And yeah. also just like he didn't want that kind of storytelling. He wants you to have to wait in between. I mean, he is a man who I, we've talked about it in some yeah. of the bonus shows yeah. where he 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 wants you to wait mm-hmm. and he wants you to feel like every excruciating second mm-hmm. while you're waiting totally. for a character to finally say that thing that they saw. You know, yeah, like it's madness. Agent Cooper in the second season of Twin Peaks, like in the opening where you're just like wondering if everything is okay and it's really drawn out. It's ridiculous. It's insane. Yeah. It's, it's like the height of absurdity and mm-hmm. insanity. Um, before we get into your, uh, plot synopsis, mm-hmm. I just want to like briefly say, did we ask what your history is with Twin Peaks? I pretty much gave okay, it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, just for people that, uh, who are not familiar with Twin Peaks, Mm -hmm. I think that talking about this book Mm -hmm. and talking about uh, Twin Peaks, it's going to be almost incomprehensible if you're not familiar with Twin Peaks. So I'm not telling you to turn this show off, but I do want to just say that the entire world of Twin Peaks, it is a murder mystery, but Mm -hmm. with big, broad, giant twists. Yeah, there's like a lot of crazy stuff and careening in different directions. So I would imagine it'd be kind of hard to listen to. Probably. Twin Peaks. Or like boring to listen to. You won't know what's going on. Maybe. Twin Peaks is a murder mystery that also features like uh possession of demonic spirits Mm -hmm. and body hopping and doppelgangers and alternate dimensions. Yeah. You may be all familiar with the iconic red room Mm -hmm. with a little person who's dancing around and talking backwards. Yeah. Uh it's it's Part of why I was so excited for this book, The Secret History of Twin Peaks, is because no one knows what the hell any of this stuff meant. Yeah, totally. Twin Peaks ended after two seasons with a huge cliffhanger Mm -hmm. that has never been resolved. Right. So uh, people have been like thirsty for any information for such a long time. Mm -hmm. But it seems like the original intent was never to really give anything away in the first place, which makes this book that we're talking about even more unique. Totally. The fact that it actually does. But does it? Offer something. Mm -hmm. Whether or not that something is satisfying. My mind is bent into a delicious Auntie Anne's pretzel. Really? Over this book. I'm going to need your help. Real? I, I need your help. I need okay. your help. Um, uh, 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 why don't we do it? Let's, right. let's just jump into it. Let's go spoiler free. All right. Uh, and I, I wonder how this will play. <laughs> and then let's get spoiler filled and try to help each other through this thing. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> A place both wonderful and strange, eh? One could say that about this book. Mark Frost, one of the creators and writers of Twin Peaks, has put together a big old doorstop of a book that purports to be a file on the history of Twin Peaks, put together by a mysterious archivist and being reviewed by an FBI agent who goes by TP, assigned to read the dossier by Deputy Director Gordon Cole. Ring any bells? Can you hear me? Wow. (laughs) It's played by David Lynch and he has a hearing problem. It fills in some of the town's backstory as well as the characters, with conspiracy theories, occultism, and secret societies along the way. This book takes you beyond the show, beyond the movie, into the secret history of Twin Peaks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Kristen, do you recommend the secret history of Twin Peaks? I I do with caveats. Yeah. Um, Okay, so again, hmm, I should start restructuring these things because – I wrote my recommendation thing at the end of the spoiler one. Let me just make sure there's nothing crazy. Okay, not not too bad. Okay, here's my recommendations. I recommend it strongly, but with caveats. If you're the kind of Twin Peaks on who just loves that world and is able to go with inconsistence, inconsistencies within it just to stay within the town limits, so to speak, and even kind of file those inconsistencies in your mind as just part of the weirdness of the whole of Twin Peaks, even in the real world, then you'll be down. If you're more of a purist who likes to keep their lore straightforward and canon, which I totally get and I think is me normally, this might drive you nuts. But flipping through the book at your local B. Dalton is still a good idea because it's really beautiful. It's funny that you say that. B. Dalton? No, no, no. The the matter of there being inconsistencies and, mm-hmm. and debatable canonicity with the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody uh, brought up these points to Mark Frost, mm-hmm. one of the creators of Twin Peaks, the writer of this book. And asked, you know, like, why are there some things that don't jive with what was in the TV show? Mm -hmm. And he said, relax, all will be revealed in due time. But he also said that he doesn't believe in the concept of canon. Well, I think that that I I have not heard that until this point. But what I would just take that to mean is that he believes in being able to rewrite whatever you want at whatever time. 
but those two concepts are at odds with each other. Either either he intentionally put inconsistent things in here so that he could point out something in the future that makes them make sense, or he doesn't believe in canonicity and everything is a free for all. Exactly. I don't know which one it is yet. I wrote about that in my regular summary. I mean, maybe maybe he's got a doppelganger too. <laughs> I know that's funny because I know that David Lynch is usually the guy that just kind of goes with his mm-hmm. gut at any given moment. He's not worried about canon. He's not worried about making sure that this shot lines up with that shot. Mm-hmm. Uh he'll just go wherever he feels like he wants to. Well, he also said that um, this is somebody asked him about it and he said, this is Mark Frost's history of Twin Peaks. It's not necessarily his history of Twin Peaks. Is that what David and, Lynch said? Yes. And he hasn't read it. That's funny. But so well, that, the, the new show is written by Mark Frost. Now that doesn't mean that David Lynch right. didn't show up and go, we're not doing these pages and throw them away. Mm-hmm. But the new show is written by Mark Frost, which tells me that it does mesh with this novel. I think probably, but that still casts doubt on it to me a little bit the whole thing is written by mark frost yeah okay that's i mean and different. and david lynch together they, yeah okay they wrote a 400 page script yeah i know a single script i know and then they shot it as one thing and gonna, then came up with episodes in editing which is nutty i'm gonna fudge my huggies i know um, um do you recommend it i do mm-hmm. i do and i'm gonna say uh uh that i recommend it obviously if you're a twin peaks fan mm-hmm. i think that picking this up it's exciting to be like Oh my gosh, they're talking about this character, which like, I didn't know that he had this backstory or yeah. occasionally they will say, and they don't do this much. They will give you an idea of where characters ended up mm-hmm. after the season two finale, mm-hmm. uh, which is exciting. Yeah, totally. Um, but I'm also, I am going to recommend it if you don't know Twin Peaks, mm-hmm. because I think that, uh, if you ha- have any, familiarity with twin peaks at all you know that it's it's bizarre and strange yeah and uh i think that reading this book is just like watching the show it's kind of experimental hmm. yeah that could be i think that this is a book that is perfectly approachable without knowing hmm. any of the previous twin peaks information they refer to events that have taken so. place uh but this book is not contingent upon those events being like fresh in your memory yeah i think you're right uh, yeah it opens, I don't know if it would be as interesting to somebody who – It may not be. Yeah. But the person that I'm going to recommend this to mm-hmm. is a very spe- specific kind of uh, mystery and uh, supernatural weirdness fan. Mm-hmm. This book is presented as a series of real documents. Mm-hmm. You're actually reading the yeah, pages cool. of Meriwether Lewis – of like Lewis and Clark yeah. traveling across the, the U.S. You're reading actual handwritten diary mm-hmm. entries of him – Traveling in the Pacific Northwest, and they're about Bigfoot and stuff. Yeah. Now, that is – on the one hand, it sounds like just too corny, just too kooky. But to me, I love that blend of real history mm-hmm. and uh, supernatural I know. I used to not, but I really do now. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, – uh, in this up. book – Remember when like, you know, like mom and like your friend's moms and everything, they were always reading like history books? Yeah. And you're like, that's so boring. Why the fuck are you reading that? No, I get it. Yeah. Totally. They're just real people. I know. But from a long time ago. But I would also argue that this book, I mean, it's not real history. Well, It did teach me some actual things. Like, I I would not consider this a spoiler, but Mm -hmm. Meriwether Lewis died. Mm -hmm. Did you know that in real life? Like (laughs) 300 years ago? Yeah. He died under suspicious circumstances. Mark Frost in this book will suggest Mm -hmm. one of the reasons he may have been murdered. Yeah. And it's tied into the bizarre mysteries of Twin Peaks. Totally. And I love it. I mm-hmm. love that. And I think that if you never saw Twin Peaks, but you're game for a weirdo mystery, yeah. you're going to find it in here. Yeah. You may not completely understand everything, but this either serves as a really fun book to help tide you over to the new series mm-hmm. from that show that ended two decades ago that you've been missing. Yeah. And I think it also works as a fun kind of cryptic entryway yeah. into the weirdness of Twin Peaks. Yeah. I think that's probably true. Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't thought about it, but you're right. I think that you could just read it without um, having seen the show. And I'd be curious to hear how that goes yeah. for somebody out there. So if totally. you do go on our recommendations and read this book without knowing anything about Twin Peaks otherwise, yeah. mm-hmm. I'd be curious to hear if that recommendation holds up. Totally. Was like, it worth it? The physical book itself is like extremely visual. Yeah. Like there are um, you know, pictures and there are all kinds of – do you know this? Did you do much research about the book? Like all the cool hidden shit in it. Yeah. 
What the fart? This is, first and foremost, this is a beautiful book. It's amazing. It really is. This- so Will and I primarily listened to the audiobook because we had a really long drive together a couple of weeks ago. So we started listening to it together. And um, then we both kind of just flipped through the book to supplement. But uh, right, William? Yeah. Is that what you did? Okay. Yes, it is. Um, so but you'll see, I kind like, of want to reread it now. <laughs> I like know. Don't, it's so cool. Don't you want to? And also because of all the hidden stuff that we'll talk about. I'm looking right now mm-hmm. at the the front page of the Twin Peaks Gazette, the actual newspaper in Twin Peaks. This is printed from uh, Thursday, November 14th, 1968, mm-hmm. from the Jaws of Victory. It appears to be a story about uh, the the local high school football team. And then over on the side in the margins, we have red text from the modern day 2017 FBI agent who is reading that front page newspaper and the accompanying notes and giving her opinions on what yeah. they must mean. Uh, it is, it, it is, I, I, it's a complicated thing to describe. Yeah. But you're literally meant to be flipping through. Like through a file. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a diner menu in here. Yeah. There are photographs of people in here. There are handwritten notes all over the place. It's incredible. And yeah, it's, it and really it's, is. It is like beautifully put together. This is mm-hmm. a collector's item. Yeah. Oh, completely. Like, I want to buy it now, having seen it. I know. Because this is Will's copy. Well, I mean, you can, I will allow you to take this. <laughs> Wait, why? Not you forever. Know, oh, okay. Well, but no, I want it forever, it. though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's like but a yeah. Cool thing. I, I, at the same rate, I will say that I, mm-hmm. I did get a, a more enjoyment out of listening to the audiobook. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they each have their pros and cons. The audiobook. I think it's- was easier to digest the actual information. Yes. Because like I said, you're reading Meriwether Lewis's notes from 300 years ago, and he writes in big loopy script. And Yeah, like I took this home a couple of nights ago so I could look through it, and Ryan was like, oh, I want to read that book. And um, I asked – Ryan's my husband – and I asked him um, what he thought, and he was like, uh, I like I'm not in the mood to really read something like that right now. Like he wanted to read something that was just more straightforward like – a novel kind of thing. And he's like, I'm just not, I'm not really into like reading something that's all over the place. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I get that. Yeah. It, it, and it, it is, it's all over yeah. the map. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in many ways, that's what makes it fascinating. Oh yeah. It's so cool. And so there's also, before we get to the non-spoiler review, there's like insane visual trickery happening in the book. I'm just going to straight up read to you guys from. That would be spoilery. Oh shit. You're right. Yeah. We'll throw that I'm in sorry. spoilers territory. Yeah. I guess you're right. I was just thinking about how it's like a feature of the book that's not necessarily like plot driven. There are but secret right. messages you're in right. some of the I images. I was more thinking, I'll say, I'll say, because this is what I was thinking. You're right, it is spoilery though. Um, if you look at it with 3D glasses, like things are crazy in it, which yeah. is so cool. Yeah, which um, is such a bizarre notion. Yeah, there are secret messages and codes in it. Yep. Oh my god! It's fantastic. So uh, yeah. that's a recommend from the so Schmucks. Fucking awesome for the secret history of Twin Peaks. Yeah, big time. Uh, if you have not read this, if you're not familiar with Twin mm-hmm. Peaks, go get familiar and yeah. come back because we're about to spoil the hell. And I can't stop thinking about it. I neither can I. About it. I I'm so I'm sponging like I can't remember sponging anything recently yeah. at all. Not Harry Potter. Not anything. Like I'm like listening to tons of the now peaking podcast like all day yep. i'm so enjoying looking up stuff about twin peaks online i'm also just reading a lot about david lynch like yeah. i'm like way in right now it's 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 really fun there's yeah, there's totally. a big thing in this book about the difference between mysteries and secrets mm-hmm. and in a nutshell i won't state it as eloquently but mysteries have been there for all time there are some grand mysteries in the world that we can never know the actual truth of it's Something for humankind to be vexed by forever. Secrets are things that we create. Mm. And they may have answers, but they're things that we have intentionally hidden away. Mm -hmm. And I think that Twin Peaks as a property is such a mix of the two. I think that so many of these things were born out of the sort of bizarre impulses of David Lynch and they don't have an answer. Mm -hmm. But I think that Mark Frost is trying to turn them into secrets that you could uh, decipher. And it's interesting to watch that process. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. See you, uh, non-spoiler guys. Yeah. Uh, seriously. On the flippy flop. Go, go, go get obsessed. Mm Mm-hmm. Totally. Because here we go. There's a rich mythology to dive into. There is. All right. Kristen, let's spoil this thing. Here we go. Pardon the interruption. To run our show, which gets costly between hosting fees and buying the books we review, Book Club Schmook Club needs help from our listeners. 
You can donate to the show by going to patreon.com slash talk bomb, where you'll be able to choose a monthly donation that you feel comfortable with. As a thank you from us, you'll instantly get access to all of our bonus between book shows, which don't stay in our main feed. Every time a new one comes out, we bump the last one on over to Patreon. There are dozens and dozens of secret shows that you haven't had access to if you're not a donor. Doesn't that inflame your FOMO? That's fear of missing out. It's an acronym. You'll also have access to each new bonus show as it comes out and early access to all of our book reviews. We load them onto Patreon as soon as we record them, so our donors get all of our episodes days earlier than they show up on the public feeds. Again, going to patreon.com slash talkbomb and setting up a donation makes that happen, and we thank you so much for it. If you would prefer to individually purchase our bonus episodes, you can find them in our shop at talkbomb.com, where we also have stickers and bookmarks for sale. We would also really appreciate your support by leaving us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. Positive reviews help other people find our show by making podcast apps more likely to list us. It also helps validate us to people cruising around looking for something to check out. So leaving us a review is like paying it forward twofold since it helps us and it turns someone else onto something you enjoy. And we do hope you enjoy the show. So let's get back to it. Whew. Okay, guys, now that they're gone, I can tell you the truth. Them, they're soft. They can't handle it. But you... We've needed someone as capable and strong as you to come along and be able to handle this type of sensitive information. So this book is very cool, but very weird in a couple of ways. So yeah, it's a dossier assembled by a mystery person who turns out to be Major Garland Briggs, who is privy to a lot of high-level government information regarding Project Blue Book, which is about aliens. So actually, a ton of this book is about aliens, and in particular, Twin Peaks – I wrote Mayor, but just Resident – Uh, Twin Peaks resident Doug Milford's experience with UFOs and aliens, who was also an army man. So are we to think that the weirdness that happened in Twin Peaks was alien based? We'll get into it, but this book would certainly imply so. But that's part of the weirdness of this. It implies or straight up presents stories that are totally counter to what we've been told in the series. For example, the backstory of Ed and Norma is totally different. Is this deliberate and all will be revealed in time, or is it revisionist history? I almost think you're going to get a better overview of the book just from Will and I talking about it than an actual summary, because even the nature of the book itself isn't all laid out in a smooth narrative. It It's files on the lives of various residents that don't all come together to paint a total complete picture. So maybe our summary of it shouldn't be one smooth narrative either. You know the premise, and I'll tell you the way that it ends. Major Briggs says that Agent Cooper has come to has come to his house and something's wrong with him. Dun, dun, dun. And then I wrote the uh, recommendations thing. And then I have um, a joke. Okay, shut up, Kristen. Let's get into convo. Wait, Kristen? Kristen? How's Annie? <laughs> oh. How's Annie? Well, How's Annie? I knew it had to be that, but it didn't play the same, so I wasn't sure. Kristen? Kristen? <laughs> well, they're in the other room, like... Agent Cooper. Oh, okay. All right. You were being the people that are worried about Agent Cooper. Yeah, and then Agent Cooper. Gotcha. Season two of Twin Peaks ends with Dale Cooper yeah. seeming to be possessed by the spirit of Bob. Yeah. The malevolent, murderous, weird thing. Yeah. I don't know. That shows up in the mirror. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, he smashes his head on the mirror, blood's trickling down his forehead, and he starts laughing maniacally, which that character does not do. No. And he's saying, how's Annie? Which is why I was just saying that. Because gotcha. Agent Cooper, when he was like... Well, it was Bob being Agent Cooper, but he's trying to fly under the radar and act like Agent Cooper. And he was like, how's Annie to the cop guys? And they were like, she's healing up just fine or whatever. And then he goes in the bathroom to brush his teeth and then he's mocking himself. Yeah, it's it's bizarre. <sighs> yeah. And that's what people were left with 20, like seven yeah. years ago. Um, the way that this book ends, which you just said. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, this dossier mm-hmm. is being put together by uh, Garland Briggs. Yeah. Okay. So he's in the military mm-hmm. and he, he was abducted at a certain point in the show. He's a character mm-hmm. from the TV show. And the way that his portion of this ends back in the early 90s, late 80s, whenever yeah. the show takes place, mm-hmm. he's Both. he's writing and being like, I knew it. There's a message from – there's like a, a message from Doug Milford, who mm-hmm. was his – like pretty much uh, his mentor yeah. who got him into studying the sort of bizarre yeah. supernatural stuff in Twin Peaks. Doug Milford has now died and Garland Briggs believes that he's being 
pushed to have a new partner. Mm-hmm. And yes, of course it's going to be Dale Cooper, the totally. local FBI man who's come to Twin Peaks and has been solving all these crimes. Mm-hmm. And he's partially sent because he has experience with yeah. kind of weird supernaturally sorts of things in the past. Yeah. yeah. And he and he's like heard a message in his head about Cooper. Yeah. Cooper. Mm-hmm. It's like, of course it's Cooper. I've called. Cooper's going to come over right now. Yeah. All right. I hear him at the door. My wife is letting him in. And then a few minutes go by. You can tell in the writing. Yep. And he comes back and he goes, Something has gone wrong. Something is horribly wrong. May Day. End. End of dossier. I just got a genuine chill. And that is all we know. That That is – there are other moments in this book where we find the, out the fate mm-hmm. of characters from that cliffhanger episode. Yeah. That is the best we can do with Dale Totally. Cooper. Totally. There are references made because those events, the events of the dossier end mm-hmm. at the end of season two of Twin Peaks. Right. But – the the actual mechanism of this novel is that Gordon Cole, the David Lynch character, mm-hmm. has assigned a modern FBI agent mm-hmm. with the initials TP to go through the dossier and figure out who put it together. Yeah. So she is reading this 25-plus-year-old mm-hmm. dossier and trying to figure out what's going on. And occasionally she will make references to the fact that, like, yeah, I, I also have I've, – I've been given access to the tapes that Cooper recorded of himself. Yeah. And uh, that's back when he was assigned to the case. So she's referring to right. Agent Cooper in a way that suggests that he is still known in mm-hmm. the world mm-hmm. to her. Yeah. But we don't get much more than that. There's not much more to dig into. Right. Until the end with May Day. Right. Something is wrong with Agent Cooper. Totally. So exciting. <laughs> But even that is back in 25 years previous, right? That part's yeah, in 25 yeah, yeah. years previous. Yeah. So after May Day. I know. Something is okay Radio silence. You know. Yeah. Like, he, like Cooper's still around. Yeah. And there's no. Apparently. Because she realized, she finds out that it's Garland Briggs. Like you, you learn that it's, that that's the archivist through her. So he's around too. Yeah. Like she's not like, oh my God, Garland Briggs, who died in that horrible thing where right. somebody sucked his soul out. True. You know, True, you're like, right. You're yeah. right. I do think it's Except funny. that that actor is dead now. So Oh, he is? Yeah. Ah. So he's not in the I was wondering. I've been avoiding. I've been mm-hmm. sponging and avoiding mm-hmm. knowing too There's much about the movie. There's nothing to find out. You can sponge freely. Yeah, There's but, really hardly anything. But now I know that he's dead, so he's not going to be on the show. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. Better that you know. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, but I I find it funny that the mechanism of the book is mm-hmm. find out who wrote this dossier. She goes through the whole thing and periodically she'll be like well, the way that he's writing, it sounds like he knows these people. Yeah. I'm beginning to think that the archivist of this dossier lived in town. Yeah. And then when they get to the end, there's literally like a, a line where the archivist writes, <laughs> I am Garland Briggs. Yeah, totally. And I have assembled this dossier. And she's like, there it is. Yeah. There it was. <laughs> and I think it's funny that like, I get it. It's the book. It's it's doing what it's got to do. But yeah. it also means that she's going through this dossier. She could just flip to the end. Totally. There's no reason she had to read it straight through. And But also like, then why did um Detective Gordon Cole or Deputy Director Gordon Cole like – so you would think that he was passing this dossier for her to figure out who the archivist was because he's done it himself or somebody else has and they couldn't figure it out. Right. Like, what happened? Yeah, I know. Why couldn't you just flip to that last page? <laughs> yeah. Why would you even need to send this to somebody else? Agreed. I think, it's, I think it's funny, but hey, yeah. whatever. We got to take it for totally. granted yeah. that they're not going to do that. They're going to study it instead. Totally. But I also read a theory online that I don't completely – I would only be able to totally understand it if I had thought about it to begin with – that – Somebody is posing as Briggs at some point in here. Like part of this was written by Briggs and there's some sort of tonal shift. I, I read that as well. I yeah. believe what it is is that uh, there's a reference made by Garland Briggs at the end mm-hmm. that this dossier about the history of Twin mm-hmm. Peaks because it goes back to Meriwether Lewis yeah. and the Native American tribes that lived in that area mm-hmm. uh, that the dossier was put together by Garland Briggs and Doug Milford okay. in town. So I th- that to me, that's my personal okay. – a uh, way to account for there being a different voice okay. of an archivist uh-huh. in there, because otherwise, I don't know. It's not it's fun not to me that to just I be like, noticed, so no. I couldn't really grasp onto it. But it was an interesting idea because I know that there are so many kind of secret yeah. things in here that I was like, maybe that maybe that is the thing. It's yeah, it's a perfectly cool idea. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> all right. So I hope talking about this book translating to the show, I hope that it does translate. I also think. I thought I wrote it in the thing. I guess I ended up not or something. But the fact that there is a companion piece to this already known to come out after the show airs makes me think 
that the reason there there's a reason that there are things that are inconsistent in here with the show and not just being like screw can and I wish right. they had gone this way. Right. Because why are there two secret histories coming out? Well, it's not or the not, other one's yeah, not yeah, called yeah. the the secret right. history. Like the other another, one's called like the final dossier or right. something mm-hmm. like that. Right. Um I mean that could just be I mean we've got 18 hours of show mm-hmm. coming our way on Sunday. Yeah. Well not all on Sunday, but you know yeah. what I mean. Uh there could be enough new concepts raised in that mm-hmm. that they would need to explain. Uh, True. could be anything. True. It, it really could be anything. And maybe yeah. it's not even as extensive as this. This is a pretty big book. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Who yeah. knows? That could be more be- maybe about the nature of the spirits of Bob. Well, that's what I was going to say next. What do you think about all the alien stuff versus more like spirit based things in the woods and everything? Because in the show, they kind of ditch the alien thing. And so I was a little bit surprised to see it here. I mean, so what do you think? I was not surprised that it was brought up. I think that this novel makes an attempt at tying all mm-hmm. uh, bizarre American mythology to the town of Twin Peaks. Yeah, through but there's some no mention means. of spirits like Bob or anything. Uh, that's why I think they're shelving it for the other dossier coming hmm. in October. Maybe. Because in this, they do go hardcore into um, resident Doug Milford of yeah. Twin Peaks went out and was present at Roswell yeah. at the notorious uh, alien UFO crash. Yeah. And he was uh, a, a confidant of Richard Nixon's mm-hmm. when Richard Nixon was obsessed with uh, extraterrestrial life forms. Who gets to forms. say, I am not a kook. I uh, love that <laughs> moment. I'm so <laughs> glad you remembered to say that. Yeah. Because I was trying to remember to say that like a week ago and I forgot I would not have said it had you not. Yep. That I am not a kook. Yep. He says I fucking love that. So enjoyable. It's a great. Yeah. Great part of the book. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So uh, uh, Doug Milford really is our Forrest Gump. Yeah. Going around Completely. the country and who would have thought touching on all of these supernatural mm-hmm. landmark points <laughs> like he yeah. made, like L. Ron Hubbard's in this thing. Yeah. That's weird. That whole part. Yeah. Like, it's fine, but it just seemed really out of place. I was like, wait, what? Like, when I was writing the summary and I was thinking about everything that happened, I was like, how is that even connected to anything else? Elrond Heber and Jack Parsons? Like, what? I don't remember. I feel like they almost just, like, kind of brought him up. Seriously, I really don't remember. Yeah, I don't really remember myself. It's a complicated it's kind of weird book. Yeah. But, but really, I think that the UFO stuff – Yeah. Is to try to, uh, and maybe this is like a goofball thing to say because it's mm-hmm. it's outside the actual material. Mm-hmm. I think that it's just so that Twin Peaks is integral to yeah. American sci-fi concepts of sci-fi kind of and hmm. yeah weirdness. Well, I kind of i I think I can kind of ride with most things, like as long as it's well done. Because I actually do like UFO stuff. Um, I hope that how ufo heavy this book is doesn't um like indicate how ufo heavy the show is going to be because i prefer the kind of like spirituality weirdness in the woods angle i agree and i think that they end with this as being like yeah uh all the ufo talk that we have done Mm -hmm. may have no relevance to this case i believe that there is like a one line dropped oh really i don't remember toward the end of the middle to the end of the book where they're like but the occurrences at twin peaks don't completely line up with these previous theories Hmm. there is a moment like that to cast doubt on that theory. okay because i think that mark frost is doing the the david lynch thing of like the second that you're able to develop a theory a working theory of something yeah they're gonna throw a wrench in the works that makes that theory no longer work completely okay uh so i don't think that this book is saying it's aliens i think I this book not. is saying uh you could easily find this to be aliens right because right. there are abductions right people get abducted and come back and they have strange symbols carved or burned onto their skin yeah totally um yeah and that happens in twin peaks yeah the show yep yeah and so the log I, lady and um what's his name garland that happens too and so i think that they want to i i think they want to acknowledge mm-hmm. that particular brand of like conspiracy Maybe there's just so much of it, which again, I actually enjoyed. Yeah. Um, but like, it really is the bulk of the book. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. Well, the, the bulk of the book, like, I feel like if you have to condense it down to something, it's the mm-hmm. adventures of Doug Milford. Completely. And the fact that he, little Dougie Milford, the fact that he ended up at Roswell, the fact that he seemingly flat out just saw an alien. Yeah. At Richard Nixon's he saw a gray. house or whatever the fuck that was. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. He saw <laughs> the White House. 
Yeah, yeah, his, his big white house. <laughs> Richard Nixon's house. Richard Nixon's house. Uh, yeah, he saw like a creature that was phasing yeah. in and out of existence or yeah. something like that. Something like that, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, th- I think that they want it to be that there's somebody from Twin Peaks who is able to leave town and explore mm-hmm. other mysteries and then returns back to the town with all this knowledge of mysteries and is trying yeah. to figure out what's going on there. Yeah. So he's just kind of learning – Everything, but the stuff that that was all entertaining enough, uh-huh. and you're right that that's the bulk of the book. So mm-hmm. frankly, it's kind of a bummer to me a little bit that it's like so much of the book is spent on that, and that's not the thing that I'm attracted to in it. Because then I'd be, yeah, I completely agree because I enjoyed it, but then I would be really excited, and be like, oh, okay, this is the stuff that I want. Like yeah. when they would go to talk about the stories of people in town from the show. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, uh, I loved it, uh, especially mm-hmm. early on in the book when mm-hmm. they're talking about people traveling around the uh, the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, and saying something about like that area with the big waterfall and the Twin Mountains. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're like yeah, yeah. shit. Twin Mountains is Twin Peaks. I know it was fun. And uh, and they're talking about how, like, they've seen visions up there and the Native Americans used yeah. to try to talk to, like, the god spirits or whatever they refer to them as. Yep. And they would see images of giants, mm-hmm. like, p- people that are seven to ten feet tall, yep. men with one arm. Mm-hmm. And it's like, is this is this all just meant to be, like, fun little Easter eggs for people that watch Twin Peaks and know about the one-armed man and the tall guy? Right. Or is it – some straight up fourth dimensional time mm-hmm. pranks totally. and they are actually seeing Philip Michael Gerard totally. from the show in the 1700s. Right. You right. know, like who knows? I know you could, you could see it either way. Either way, it's sweet or almost like premonitions. Like those spirits were always kind of there and then they kind of manifested by yeah. either actually manifesting or kind of drawing those kinds of people in. Absolutely. It could be anything. Oh, boy. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, I love those moments. Mm-hmm. And I do I, too. And I love the idea but that- But they are f- somewhat few and far between, which is yes. a little frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. I never found it frustrating. This 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 book has like such a rhythm to it that like- Not frustrating. I was just grooving whenever like- Like it's it's got such a calm- It's all mm-hmm. historical. It's so it's calm. all very flat tones and- yeah. Just kind of riding things through. I found it entertaining the whole way. It wasn't frustrating um, when I was listening to it because I would just get into a group. But then when one would come up, I'd be like, oh, I – well, I I didn't even think about it in the moment. But like it's surprising there isn't more of that. You know what I mean? Like you get that thrill of like, oh, they're talking about giants or whatever. It's – it. I wish it was a little bit more throughout. Yeah, I guess so. Like Doug Milford on his travel also encountered things that kind of harken back to the town where you can be like, oh my God, that's like blah, blah, blah. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. I mean, they do, they do enough of it that I'm satisfied. I don't think they do that much. Can you think of other parts where they do that? Well, I mean, maybe not like on the nose, like mystery, sort of the the weird spiritualism Mm -hmm. side stuff, but like they do enough things that tie directly into the show that Mm -hmm. I never felt like I was like, well, who the fuck is Doug Milford? Because frankly, if you're reading this book, yeah. yeah, who the fuck is Doug Milford? Yeah. Like we're referring to him now like, yeah, of course, it's about Doug Milford. <laughs> On the show, he was like an 80-year-old man totally. who died having up. sex with his new wife. Yeah, he shows up in the second season like partway through and he's like barely in it. Yeah, yeah. he shows up in the third half of Twin Peaks. Yeah, totally. Uh, that people don't like. Yeah. And he dies. Yeah. <laughs> That's that character, and he's like the main character of this book, practically. Yeah, it is weird, but it's like fine. You know, it doesn't bother you, right? Yeah, but uh, uh, they do enough uh, revivals of characters mm-hmm. from the show, mm-hmm. and the kind of winks to to things that take place within the city limits of Twin Peaks. Yeah, that I was satisfied enough, even when yeah. they weren't outright talking about like the way that spirits operate or talking mm-hmm. about electricity mm-hmm. humming and being weird and sp- yeah. like seeing a vision or something. Yeah. Like the fact that they talk about log lady and why she carries the log mm-hmm. is like one, I didn't have a question about that. Right. Two, I never wanted to know the answer to it. And three, actually that's a pretty good story. Thank you mm-hmm. for telling me that story in the yeah. full explanation. Yeah. So I, there were enough moments that bring you directly back mm-hmm. to that town and those characters that I didn't miss Yeah. doing more. Yeah. Yeah, I could I could have done with a little more. Um, I mean, they answer some big stuff. Mm-hmm. They say in so in the end of Twin Peaks season two, yeah, a bank blows up, yeah, with a bunch of main characters inside it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's like a I forget the the guy's name, uh, Andrew Packard. Or was yeah, it Andrew Eckhart? Packard. I can't remember who was I don't there. Know. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought they were the same person in my head for a while. Yeah, kind of potato potato. I yeah. think it's Andrew Packard. 
So they're yeah. they're conniving jerks and they're yeah. sneaking into a bank vault. But there's also lovable character Pete mm-hmm. Martell. Yep. The she's dead, wrapped in plastic. <laughs> Sweet little Pete. He's in there. Mm-hmm. And so is Audrey Horn. Yep. Who is like an iconic character. Yeah, totally. Uh, and is such a great character. She's yeah. in there when the bank explodes. Yeah. And that's in the tr- the season finale. No one right. knows what happens. Well, we find out exactly what happened in here. And it's totally felt true. Like it, yeah. Yeah. Almost everyone died. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh Thomas Eckert or and or Andrew Packard. Yeah, I don't remember. Are dead. Yeah. Sadly, Pete Martell is dead. Mm-hmm. Jack Nance, the actor who plays him in real life, died in the late nineties. Mm-hmm. So he can't he can't do the show. Yeah. Uh and so while it's a shame that they couldn't just be like, Yeah, Pete lived out the rest of his life, mm-hmm. like on the lake fishing. Yeah. Something like that. Why they had to kill him in that bank explosion is almost a bummer, except he is, uh, they say, evidence suggests that he threw himself over Audrey Horn mm-hmm. to protect her from the blast. Yeah, which seems right. I love it. I so know, I do too. Pete, who was like just a good guy mm-hmm. on the show, dies effectively a hero. Totally. And Audrey Horn mm-hmm. survives, guarded by the, the, the bank vault door yeah. and Pete, mm-hmm. but is in a coma. Yeah. Uh, love it. Yeah, I know. I thought it was great. Perfect, perfectly reasonable explanation Completely. for a giant, crazy cliffhanger. Yes, totally. And it's presented as like, well, of course, there was the bank explosion of mm-hmm. the late 80s where this yeah, happened. Yeah, it's a given. Through, yeah. and like looking at newspaper records and stuff, like mm-hmm. total no-brainer way to do it. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Log Lady got married. Mm-hmm. She had been abducted as a child. Mm-hmm. And then uh, when she grew up, got married. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like on their wedding day. Yes. Her husband goes missing. Yeah. In the woods. Mm -hmm. He's taken. Yeah. And so she. They got married in the chapel in the woods, which is like a thing. A couple of people got married there. Yeah. Yeah. And so she marches out to the woods Mm -hmm. and cuts off a piece of a tree and comes back with it. And Mm -hmm. that's how she became the log lady. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Great. It's great. Sounds like a weird, like, fairy tale. Totally. You're right. It does. It sounds totally like a fairy tale. Man, it's just perfect. Yep. No brainer. Mm -hmm. I didn't need to know, and I didn't want to know, and I'm so glad I know. It works. Yeah, It works perfectly. Hank, who was the the, the, the bad boy husband of Norma, who runs the Double R Diner, Mm -hmm. uh, is put in jail Mm -hmm. by the end of Twin Peaks, uh, and he is killed in jail. Yeah. Murdered in jail. Yeah. A sticky end to hank yeah <laughs> Wait, what is it from harry potter it was like <laughs> your parents this. will meet this or you'll some shit i don't know meet the same sticky end yeah Potter. yeah <laughs> malfoy yeah but uh the, the actor who plays hank mm-hmm. acts out mm-hmm. that moment in the book he performs as yeah. hank one last time because he won't be in the new show yeah hank is dead mm-hmm. um yeah it's great it is it's fantastic yeah. i love the explanations of all of these too. things funnily enough is there a little shift uh, Chef Sheriff Truman in the book. I just realized they did something big with Sheriff. Truman. I'm trying to remember. They talked about Sheriff not... Truman and his brother. Well, yes, because well, do you want to? Do you know anything? I do. Okay. Do you not know? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. Okay. I just knew that you were trying to avoid things. So no, no, no I already. I yeah. I already okay. Know this, yeah, but yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, because Sheriff Truman isn't going to be in the show, but his brother Frank Truman will be. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, the book is literally, from what I can tell, just establishing that there is another Truman. Brother, totally. Yeah. Which is a funny thing to do. Yeah. Uh, but I think that that was pretty much all they really got into with uh, Sheriff Truman. Yeah, I think so. And maybe all they really got into as far as what the characters are are doing at all. Uh. Oh, like modern day yeah. or whatever? Yeah, pretty much. Because they tell the story of Ed and Norma. They kind of go – oh, they go right. into a lot to Josie. Which was much needed, frankly. The character of Josie – It was much needed, but it doesn't really match up for me because the actress didn't play it that way. No, but – So – But, yeah, but was, when you think of the show, Josie Packard mm-hmm. – was she she shot dale cooper yeah she killed people Mm -hmm. but the actress that played that part was so wistful and 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 tiny and and she's like a sweet you know but like shitty like assassin in the book yeah so it's i don't know that part didn't really work that well for me yeah but that's the actress's fault she's still just yeah but that 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 is as it is it's already that's already established yeah but she but in the show she did kill people and shit yeah but like 
Not like that. I can't even remember off the top of my head now, but it was like, she was like a crime lord. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> like, t- she was like intimidating to people and stuff. Like, there's no way. Yeah. She spoke like 30 languages by the time she was 15. Yeah. There's, and, there's just no way. Yeah. It doesn't work with the actress that they had, but she never worked anyway. No. She was the, she was always like the weakest yeah, part of the show to me. Completely. I could not stand her. I know. Um, she got stuck in a doorknob. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so had fun weird. In the doorknob. I wonder if that'll be in the show. I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, this is the stuff that I'm like, if you don't know Twin Peaks and you're mm-hmm. still listening. Yeah, She totally. got stuck in a doorknob means nothing. And yet, it's Everything. exactly what happens. Yeah, she dies and then they zoom in on like a drawer pull. Drawer pull. It's not even a doorknob. It's like from a dresser. And her face is in there. She's like, ah! like she got like possessed, like trapped in there. The like weirdest shit. Is, it's so weird. She died of fear. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, I love the way that they refer to Laura Palmer and the Palmer mm-hmm. family where they're like mm-hmm. before the horrible murder. Occurred. Yes. That felt very like, oh boy, yeah. I that know about that. Just felt like, yeah, the big town incident. Yeah. Uh, which I thought is great. Totally. Also, ostensibly, this novel, mm-hmm. the, the this dossier was found at a crime scene mm-hmm. that appears to be connected right. to the Laura Palmer case from 20-odd years ago. Right. So what is the current case? What is that? I don't know. So you think TP is a character in the new show? I do. My I do theory too. is that uh, TP, Tamara Preston, mm-hmm. uh, the person who's trying to deduce mm-hmm. the identity Oof. of the archivist, I think that she's Laura Dern. Me too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's just too perfect. Yeah, me too. I think that she uh, uh, would be perfectly paired with Cooper mm-hmm. if they do, yep. like, if she does track him down and she can save his soul or whatever mm-hmm. the hell is going on with him. Yep. He is, I hope, still sort of like boyishly optimistic and willing to believe in the supernatural. Yeah. And she, a- as per this book, yeah. I love this character. Yeah, me too. She is hesitant to mm-hmm. believe in any of it. Mm-hmm. But as evidence builds up and up and up, yeah. she is getting creeped out by it. And yeah, I love it. she's like, uh, it. <laughs> like it's one of those things where it's like, it's because it's a book. You would never write this on your notes to the FBI or whatever. She's like, um, I think I'm going to go turn on the lights because I'm starting to get creeped out or love something. It. Yeah, it's fun. I love it. Yeah. I, I think it's, I think it's brilliant. And it makes totally. me really love the character. Me too. So I hope that Tamara Preston is in the show and I hope yeah. it's Laura Dern because Laura Dern is from Blue Velvet with Kyle MacLachlan yep. and it would just be too perfect it, mm-hmm. for me it's like the perfect symmetrical choice yeah, yeah yeah and she's just fucking great even though i still haven't seen blue velvet she's in um, like a million things right now too. i know i retweeted something today again my my mythical twitter account that i always talk about sure where somebody was like you have a few years ago lord and so amazing she should be in everything you have today she's in everything wow like that kind of thing well done yeah maybe it was it's all due to you Oh, no, no, no. I retweeted that. I didn't uh, say that. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, I take no credit. But it's true because everybody's – I feel like anytime I've seen her, I'm like, ah, I fucking love Laura Dern. She should be in everything. And now she is in everything. Yeah, yeah. She's Have you everywhere. ever seen Enlightened? It was on no, HBO. Oh, it, was, it was only two seasons and it was one of those shows where it like got canceled and everybody freaked out about it. Um, It's great. It's about yeah. somebody – or it's her character – and she's got like mega, mega anger management problems. She's like a nightmare. And then it's like her process of like – um like taking care of herself and like coming out of that. Huh. It's so good. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Um, are there anything in this, things in this book? You, you mentioned like, uh, Tamara Preston's mm-hmm. notes where she's like, I want to go turn on all the lights now. Yeah. Is there anything in the book that you were like, Oh, what a cool, creepy idea. Let me think. I've got at least one off the top of my uh, head. God, let me think. Well, okay. I liked, Oh, I liked the camp stuff. When they were at camp and uh, Doug Milford saw like a giant across the lake. Or wait, now I'm remembering. Is it a giant he saw or it's yeah. like it could be something else? No, it was a giant. It, that's the yeah. one that I'm thinking of. Yeah, that was a really cool like atmospheric story that I feel like would work even as its just own story. Like that could be an abnormally well-written creepypasta. Yeah. Oh. Although creepypasta is often really well-written, so that's not even the right thing to say. But um, but yeah, like it's a cool like – creepy story in its own right yeah yeah you like, oh yeah and then, is there something with like owls that are humongous yeah sightings of of man-sized yeah, 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 owls yeah. yeah and evidently that uh the owls are uh sometimes not what they seem well they are not what they seem <laughs> because sometimes they're evidently a proxy for gray aliens yeah over right. large size mm-hmm. almond shaped eyes yeah um like gray aliens yeah but yeah doug milford as a young boy scout is out camping mm-hmm. and um he sees when he goes to like 
soak beers or sodas or <laughs> oh, soda yeah, pops was, or something in the lake soda. to yeah. chill them. Yeah. He walks out and sees a tall figure standing, just mm-hmm. staring at him. Mm-hmm. And then lightning strikes. Yeah. And the figure doesn't even flinch, doesn't even move a muscle. It just keeps staring at Doug Milford. Mm-hmm. And he gets a chill down so his freaky, spine and yeah. he runs back to camp. And uh, uh, I love that. I love that, like that quaint horror. Mm-hmm. Of that, but I also love that whole segment because I don't know if you kept picking up on it. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Doug Milford, Boy Scout, Mm -hmm. is the most like golly gee shucks. Like he is so perfect at everything he does. He's like, well, we're hiking up to base camp. Oh, wait a second, William. That's not Doug Milford. It's Andrew Packard. That's Andrew Packard. Andy and Doug Doug Milford is his um his scout leader. Shit, is that right? Yeah, uh huh. It's little Andy Packard. Whoa. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. I guess so much of it, I assume the book is about Doug Milford. It kind of, a lot of it in the beginning is Andrew Packard as a kid, and then it kind of transfers oh, into Doug, right. Doug Milford. You're right. Yeah. Damn. This is yeah. a bizarrely structured book. Yeah, totally. Um, but all right. Well, then, all right. Then Andrew Packard, yeah. Boy Scout, is right. like, well, the incline on our hike yeah, totally. vacillates between seven degrees and ten degrees of inclination. It's extremely charming. I'll get my protractor out and yeah. <laughs> like it's just like it's insane. Yeah, totally. He's got like he's prepared for everything, yeah. which is the Boy Scout motto, but yeah. like he's literally being like, I'll use my magnifying glass to start a fire at base camp. Yeah. And they're like, All right, Andy, whatever. <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. I, I I think that the book has like just enough sort of like of that bizarre comedy mm-hmm. that Twin Peaks has. Yeah, totally. Mixed with just sort of like a general air of unease yep. about sci-fi. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's it feels Twin Peaksy. It feels perfectly Twin Peaksy. Yeah. That's awesome. So now what are your thoughts on the things where they are stories that are just not what we've learned from the show? Like I keep saying it because I don't even know why. I just think it's one of the more obvious ones. The story of Ed and Norma. Um, getting together or not getting together is completely different in the book than it is in the show. Well, I didn't remember what it was in the show. It's that, um, like, what the hell is it? Like, Ed is somewhere else for prom, so Hank swoops in and, like, picks her up or something like that. And then he's all bummed and, like, Norma kind of, I mean, uh, Nadine kind of, like, hits him right at that time. He's like, yeah, sure, all right, we can go out. And then he shoots her eye out because they take a, like, walk in the woods or something and he accidentally shoots her in the eye and then he feels bad and then they're like linked together forever in this book it's that ed was away in vietnam right and while he's away hank swoops in and he's writing normal letters the entire time that hank hides from her it's just completely different so here's what i think and there are uh, there are other things like that in the book as well like not as damn all i can think of is that norma stuff they say that norma's mom is named like Inga and died yeah. or something. Yeah. Right. And in the show, Norma's mom is actually a character. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah. Uh, things like that. Uh, two things. One, mm-hmm. I am eager to see if they are part of some Mark Frost big plan to explain what they are. Yeah. And here's what I think it might be. Okay. There is, uh, there's much to do mm-hmm. online about one of the particular secret messages in this book. Mm-hmm. There's a two page spread somewhere That's around. So cool. It's so cool. Somewhere around the middle of this book that yeah. just shows a bookshelf. Yeah. It shows uh, – I think it's the Bookhouse Boys. Yeah. It's, it's the Bookhouse Boys' favorite books. Yeah. The Bookhouse Boys is literally like a secret <laughs> the, society. The Bookhouse Boys thing is adorable because they're about justice and literacy. Yes. They support <laughs> justice – and literacy which is so funny so it's like a bunch of like tough guys who are gonna crack cases like they go to one-eyed jacks in the show to do like a sting operation on the people who they think may have killed laura and are, or and are involved in drugs and they also have a bookshelf of their favorite books back yeah. at their hideout so they have listed in there like everybody's got uh one of their favorite books up on the shelf and so it's a double page spread in the novel yeah and uh there is a theory right now online that uh one of the secret messages in it if you read like if you hold the books up to a mirror mm-hmm. and uh, i don't know like pick yeah, the first it. word of each book yeah something like that it says fear the double yeah and twin peaks the show is largely about 
you know, being replaced by an evil doppelganger version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that is saying, you know, fear, fear. There's another doppelganger out there. Totally. But even more specifically. And not exactly doppelganger person. Because it's like your same body. You know what I mean? But it's just kind of um, a possession. Right. So it's kind of a doppelganger in that it's your face, but it's not your soul, basically. Right. But it's not like it's a physical do doppelganger. And so there's evidently also a, a further message uh, that if you keep – uh, 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 poking at it, it's fear the double mm -hmm. Cooper. Yeah. Cooper is a double now mm -hmm. because Cooper appears to be possessed by the spirit of killer Bob. Yeah. So, uh, that's one of the secret messages, messages in this book. Now that is, is like on the nose. We all know that because we've watched Twin Peaks and we saw the way that it ended with Cooper being possessed. Fine. Mm -hmm. Here's my thing. In the same picture, I believe. The book The Stand is in there. Stephen King's yes, The Stand. Yes, it is. Which is uh, largely about alternate realities. Yep. Now, I think it would not be outside the realm of possibility mm -hmm. for Twin Peaks to be dealing with multiple versions of Twin Peaks. That's what I'm thinking from it as well. Yeah. Um, Because, like, there had been some sort of – bad blood between Mark Frost and David Lynch at some times and like arguments over story and everything. And because I, I've just gotten like a weird kind of like combative vibe from Mark Frost in interviews and things I've looked up. Part of me wondered if this was his way of just making it his way, but like, there's no way, you know, like I, I still, I would be surprised if that was the case, Yeah, but I don't think it's impossible, especially because David Lynch said this is his version of the history of Twin Peaks, not mine. Like, it's just like a weirdness to that to me, but I am much more inclined to think that it is, there's a reason for it. It yeah. seems deliberate. Like, why, just why would you make up a know. different story? You know? I, I think that, I think that it would also give them freedom to, to go bigger and weirder with stuff. Mm -hmm. There, there's obviously, you know, there are characters that died on the show that mm -hmm. the yep. cast, you know, we know that characters are coming back. Yep, Leland totally. Palmer is on the show. Well, mm -hmm. is he just going to be a spirit? Yeah. In the Black Lodge? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. But maybe we'll also go to an alternate reality version of Twin Peaks where mm -hmm. Leland Palmer is alive and well. Totally. Uh, who's to say? Who knows? Yeah. I mean, I really wouldn't be surprised if this thing went big and wild and jumped all through time. Maybe we'll meet either. Meriwether Lewis. Like, I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Who the hell knows what's going to happen in this totally. thing? Totally. Totally. So I just want to read you – oh, it's kind of long – well, let me just read you the discrepancies about the archivist, because I do find this interesting, and some of these things do seem deliberate, like kind of things that um, would maybe support the archivist not being um, Briggs the entire time. Okay. Um, let's see. The archivist talks about Milford, so Doug Milford, with contempt when recounting the events of the 1940s. But starting on the page where he begins to talk about himself with the first person, as noted by TP, he talks about Milford fondly. This shift in tone and behavior regarding Milford might indicate a change of archivist. The archivist's, quote, faithful Corona, the typewriter, does not have a um, asterisk key, even though he typed this symbol several times, including under this very picture. So I think it's a picture of the um, typewriter. Other symbols such as the pound sign and quotation marks are also not on the depicted Corona, which appears to be a 1939 Corona standard with a German quartz instead of QWERTY keyboard. While Corona has produced quartz typewriters, those in the standard series are uncommon if they ever even existed. I kind of lost the thread on that one. I'm not sure what that means. I'm going to chalk anything up about the fact that there's a picture of a typewriter okay. in this thing as being like – Sorry, I know that maybe these things don't jive, but do you yeah. really expect them to not be able to use a goddamn asterisk in this book because there's not one on that one picture of that one typewriter? Yeah, if that's what if that's all that it boils down to, then yeah. I'm in uh I I I'm huge on I continuity. I think this is all picture of typewriter related. Hate it then. Yeah, junk all that. Let me see. Cuz here's the thing. Stop, I stop talking. Ah. You stop talking, there'd be dead air. Hang on. Okay. Okay, it's all about the typewriter picture. Never mind. All right. Well, then I'm going to keep talking. Yeah, that's fine. Because I'm trying to say something that yeah. I think is important mm -hmm. uh, for people that are trying to deduce clues mm -hmm. in stuff like this and really anything. Yeah. 
I'm huge on continuity. Mm-hmm. I want things to fit and I want everything to have a reason. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's just not possible. Yes. So I'm not going to expect them to write this like 500 page book mm-hmm. dancing around using certain keys yeah. because they took a picture of the typewriter that it was typed on and those keys don't exist on that typewriter. Yes. The reason I got caught on that just now, I actually hadn't read that before, but it said something that I misinterpreted. Uh, they talk about how like he was using um like an i and inst- like a letter i instead of a one or something and part of the code in that picture of all the books involves letter i's instead of ones so i thought that there was an actual tie-in because you can literally see that in that picture right yeah. but i don't think so yeah no i think that that was more about because that's supposed to be reflected in a mirror exactly. image exactly and a one is not perfectly symmetrical mm-hmm. but an i is totally so yeah, yeah i think that's that yeah uh some of the stuff that I think is super cool in here, just to to cap off why the book itself is an interesting kind of artifact. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked about like the three D glasses yeah. stuff. Uh, Jacoby, mm-hmm. the character of uh, whatever, what's his name? Russ Tamblin. Yeah. Oh, Ru- in the sh- in the show. I meant in the show, but yeah, uh, Russ Lawrence. Tamblin. Lawrence Jacoby, the weird doctor with mm-hmm. the three D glasses. There's like a picture of like reviews of a book that he wrote. And if yeah. you look through a blue the book lens. Looks so sweet. I know it does. If you look through a blue lens, only some words are visible. If you look through the red lens, the other words are visible. There's a picture of Leland Palmer mm-hmm. with an overlay of Bob, of Killer Bob. Just like a, 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 a transparent to the point where you almost just think that it's kind of blotches on the page until you start paying attention. Yeah. An overlay of the spirit of Killer Bob on top of Leland Palmer's, Palmer's picture. Just just very cool, well thought out mm-hmm. images and even like small stuff, honestly. The, I, I'm looking right now at a recreation of uh, communication from Calhoun Memorial Hospital. Department of Psychology by Dr. Lawrence Jacoby. Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter what it is, date and time, date of birth, stuff like that. But honestly, this is the kind of thing that you don't cast another glance at it because it just looks like whatever, a boring memo page. Mm-hmm. Someone had to design this. Someone designed the icon yeah. for Calhoun Memorial Hospital and a separate icon for the Department of Psychiatry. Mm-hmm. And they they made this thing look official. Yeah. The false documents in this thing are designed. Everything is is designed to the point of insanity. Uh, characters have unique handwriting when you're looking at a scan of postcards. It's terrific. I love like even even you know I I thought that it was easier to to get the information out of this book through the audio book, mm-hmm. but it is amazing to to look at this book and flip through it almost like a picture book. Yeah, totally. To see the the wild production value of the artwork, it's incredible. It really is. I'm trying to remember. Do, do does Jacoby die? Lawrence Jacoby dies. No, no, his brother his Robert brother, does. His okay, died. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, honestly, there, there, the book, the book doesn't um, bring you anywhere. Really, mm-hmm. it colors in things that you maybe didn't fully understand. Yeah. But there's no reason that you need to read this to, I think, understand whatever they're going to do in season three. No, I don't think so. I think they've said that. They, I think they said that you, you just don't have to know anything to go into it, but that it wouldn't hurt to watch the pilot. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. that's funny. That's I the most recent that. thing that I read. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering about that. How are they going to handle people that have never seen Twin Peaks at all? They said that you don't have to have seen it before. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that we goddamn read this book. Me too. It and was I am so enjoyable. Eager for more. And we do have more Twin Peaks mm-hmm. in our future, but not just yet. Yeah. Uh, we've got several Twin Peaks uh, books mm-hmm. over across the room on the bookshelf, just waiting for the yep. end of this season of Twin Peaks. Mm-hmm. And then of course, we know that way out in October, yep. Mark Frost will be releasing the final dossier mm-hmm. about Twin Peaks. Maybe that'll tie up some loose ends. I don't know. I think it's not impossible. I think the fact that the, he's already announced that makes me think that it has something to do with this. Yeah. Because why even – well, I guess people do things like that. True. So never mind. Yeah. But yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. But Stoked. boy, it was fun. Yeah. Super fun. Yeah, totally. So yeah, guys. So that's it for the Secret History of Twin Peaks. On the next book episode of the show, we are going to be reading a book that was suggested to us by our listener, Andy. And um, he sent us an email at schmook at TalkBomb. Is that right? Well, he used the co- the contact form on the uh, TalkBomb website. He used yeah. the contact form on the TalkBomb website, which you can do. Anyway, so we're going to be reading a book that I'm stoked about that I wanted to read for a long time. And I think kind of like flipped through because I'm pretty sure our dad had it. 
but um, it is called Ripper, The Secret Life of Walter Sickert by Patricia Cornwell. And it's her um, investigation into the real life Jack the Ripper case and who she has come around to think is probably the killer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so brief synopsis here. Uh, from New York Times bestselling author Patricia Cornwell comes Ripper. The Secret Life of Walter Sickert, a comprehensive and intriguing expose of one of the world's most chilling cases of serial murder and the police force that failed to solve it. Vain and charismatic, Walter Sickert made a name for himself as a painter in Victorian London, but the ghoulish nature of his art, as well as extensive evidence, points to another name, one that's left its bloody mark on the pages of history, Jack the Ripper. Cornwell has collected never-before-seen archival material, including a rare mortuary photo, Mm. personal correspondence, and a will with a mysterious autopsy clause, and applied cutting-edge forensic science to open an old crime to new scrutiny. Incorporating material from Portrait of a Killer, Jack the Ripper, Case Closed, this new edition has been revised and expanded to include eight new chapters— detailed maps, and hundreds of images that bring the sinister case to life. Sweet. I actually, it was Portrait of a Killer that I had flipped through before, not this one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Special note, this book contains images that some readers may find disturbing. Most readers. And also, so we're on the Amazon page, and it says that um, it's available for Kindle in Motion, which I've never heard before, heard of before. And it says this book can be read on any device, including Kindle e-readers, uh, including Kindle e-readers. Kindle in Motion books include art, animation, or video features that can be viewed on certain Fire tablets and the free Kindle app for iOS and Android. You can switch features on or off at any time. So I'm very curious about that. I've never seen that before, so I'm probably going to read it that way. Yeah, I've never heard of that. that yeah. That'll be cool to check out. Totally. Um, they Even for the Amazon page, they have an image image that's like fading in and out on the cover of the book that they always have it looks sweet that's cool yeah Yeah, i didn't even notice that that's pretty awesome yeah uh yeah so uh the the secret life of walter sickert Mm -hmm. two weeks from uh from uh today yep so it'll be june 2nd friday june 2nd which is also when your entries for our contest are due that's right so get out there share the show Mm -hmm. write some reviews and let us know you did it so that you can be entered to win all of the brand new book club schmuck club merch yeah baby all available at (laughs) talkbomb.com slash schmuck and of course the the uh book club schmuck club uh podcast icon sticker Mm -hmm. is otherwise exclusively available only on patreon Mm -hmm. so get out there schmucks spread the good word fly fly tell them all (laughs) tell them tell them all (laughs) and please join us in our facebook group on on facebook um (laughs) so just search book club schmuck club podcast in facebook and a secret group will pop up that you can join and talk to other friends and schmucks that's right yeah we'll be back next week for an extracurricular off-topic episode talking about whatever we want before we're back in two weeks Mm -hmm. to talk about jack the ripper uh but uh if you guys have anything that you would like to share with us about this book the secret history of twin peaks or just twin peaks the show any thoughts at all Send them our way because we're all over the place, oh, like yeah. on Twitter and Instagram. That's right. I'm at Chillin' Kristen on both. I'm at Haunted Sponge on both. Uh, hope you guys are going to be tuning in for Twin Peaks on Sunday night oh, at yeah. 9 p.m. You know that we will be. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, boy, do I want to get totally observed or do I want to do some occasional live tweets? What oh. do I want to do? Maybe a mix of both. Sure. Whatever. Yeah. Follow us and we'll see what happens. See what happens. Yeah, uh, yeah. Very excited for that. I am too. I can't wait. Uh, <laughs> but more than anything, we just hope that he had a good time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and until next we meet, oh, good mm-hmm. talk, gang. Meeting adjourned. <sighs> oh, excuse me. I don't have to excuse a goddamn thing. You could mind your manners. You can mind your P's and Q's. You can mind crossing your T's and dotting your lowercase J's. I was thinking about... I, I've been I've had a hankering for watching Austin Powers lately. And I, I remembered, I think that I have gotten you the Wayne's World 2-pack t- and the Austin Powers trilogy on Blu-ray in your home. Did you give me the Wayne's World 2-pack? I thought... Did I not? I thought I did. I don't think so. But I do have the Austin Powers trilogy on Blu-ray. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I might need to borrow that. No problem. I think you have it, don't you? No. Oh, okay. I almost I almost got it the other day. Didn't you ha- did idiot. did you have it and then you like sold it or something? I kind of think that. Probably. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, that you my, had I it. I sold that whole crazy DVD collection. I know, because I remember there were things that I was like, Will, what are you doing? I know. I know. 
But mm-hmm. I, I was also treating it as like, well, DVD was going out at mm-hmm. the time. It was still enough in demand that I got cha-ching yeah. for all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was also an opportunity Are to... Are Blu-rays not DVDs? I, I mean, they're discs. Hmm. Uh, Never thought about it before. Yeah, they they are a, no, a new format. Well, mm. and they're kind of going out of style too. Really? For what? For digital. Oh, streaming. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I've been treating it in my head as like, all right, well, I sold all my my entire movie collection, but yeah, that's also an opportunity to upgrade. Yeah, yeah. Go to Blu-ray. Yeah, right. When I repurchase all the shit that I used to own, because mm-hmm. uh, I will do that. Mark my words. Well, but you're going backwards because you just you just bought Scream on Laserdisc. Well, that's so that I can use it as a <laughs> festive wall hanging. <laughs> hey, everyone. Thanks again for listening to the show. If you enjoyed this episode, you should consider going to our website, www.talkbomb.com, where we have archived every show we've ever done. You can also visit our bonus show store, where we sell exclusive episodes of our podcasts for 50 cents a piece, not to mention our merchandise. If you enjoy Talk Bomb, the best thing you can do is help us spread the word. Tweet, share, review. We would greatly appreciate anything you can do to spread the word. Please also consider following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, where we're at Talk Bomb. Following us online is the best way to keep up to date with our productions. More than anything, we just hope you enjoyed the show. So thanks again for listening, and we'll see you at TalkBomb.com.